are you? Welcome back, Shinners. Welcome back to the Shindig podcast, where we get under the skin of the trials community. I am Tom Hutley. And my name is Matt Pengelly. Today, special guest this week. Yes, um, he's a rocket. He's a man. He's a <laughs> <laughs> and he has no limits. <laughs> Elton John. <laughs> rocket man. Yeah. No, it's Rocket Rich. It's Rocket yeah. Rich. <laughs> or, um, hey, what's up, how's guys? it going? Uh, Richard Smith is his official name. As you'll see him on the, uh, yeah. on the leaderboards and the... Uh, competition. You had to correct me before we started uh, yesterday, oh, yeah. Rich, didn't you? I just want to bring this up quickly. Yeah. He said, "Yeah, I love." I called him yeah. Rick Smith, yeah. right? And uh, he was like, "Oh, my name's Richard, Richard Smith." I'm like, "Really? <laughs> like, that, doesn't Rick sound cooler?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. To be fair, when you say "Oh, Rick Smith," I was like, "That's my new stage name. That's I, it." I yeah. knew it. So the Shindig <laughs> podcast have given it Rick with a C, no K, because yeah. it's spelt Richard. That's so we it. Call him, you heard it here first, you know, ladies and gentlemen. Rick gents. Smith. Uh, yeah. <laughs> dangerous with no seat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, brilliant, mate. Thanks thanks for, for coming on and, you know, chatting trials. How are you doing? Yeah, all good. Well, firstly, thanks for having me on. This is awesome. I'm an avid listener slash watcher. So, um yeah, it's actually really cool oh, to be on here. Thank you, man. Um, really good, man. Thank you. Yeah, well, good. Yeah, I've just finished some lunch. So, <laughs> and we saw um, we saw you went out for a ride this morning too, didn't you? I did go out for a ride this morning. Oh, I thought, you know what? Yeah, if I'm going did. on the Shindig podcast <laughs> this afternoon, there is something I have to do before doing it. So, get yeah, a Shindig. Out. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm I'm yeah, I'm not saying this just for the for the show, but. The last move I did, I, I'm up to front and, you know, was around off a rock. Yeah. And my foot mo- slid on the pedal in midair. And I was like, everything went a little bit slow motion. I was oh. like, you've got to be kidding me. And I'm not saying that for the show. I was like, I'm literally about to get a shindy for the, before the shindy. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but I landed and didn't. So unfortunately, there is no picture to send in. That's all right. Well, that listen, would have you been know, a little bit epic. It is sort of ominous, though, sometimes when you put like a shindig shirt on or like the socks yeah. and you're like, these are very close yeah. to Like when you put the socks on, they're like, they're close to my shins. Like, what if, I, yeah, yeah. What if the prophecy <laughs> comes true? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're just asking for it. Yeah. But that's what yeah. I mean, because it, it will happen. You know, it will happen one yeah. day and you can't avoid it. So it when it does, yeah. When you know, it does, slide into our DMs and we'll share it for it's you. That's what it, yeah. It's like a, win a prize, you know, yeah, get some recognition. Um, oh, be proud brilliant. of it, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. But where, where are you in the, in the world today, Rich? So you went riding I'm, this morning. Where'd you go? Uh, I was. Oh, I'm down. I'm based in Pool, uh, down on the south Dorset. Yeah, south coast. And uh, yeah, this morning I went riding at one of my local spots in Sandbanks. Ooh, very if anyone know, yeah, anyone who yeah, yeah. knows what Sandbanks like, oh, that's where you ride <laughs> local, is it? You know, they kicked <laughs> off there, like all the all the uh, like locals, like oh, who is this guy with no seat coming along? What's going on here? You know what? It's actually quite cool. It what you get. Sandbanks is definitely a mix, mixture of both people because you've got people there who spend millions of pounds to live or have a holiday at home there. Yeah. And that so a lot of the time they kind of walk past and look at you like you've got nothing better else to do than, you know, ride on some rocks and potentially crush a couple of flowers. Yeah. But then you get some other guys like ride past and they're like, oh man, that's mega. Like guys who go there for surf and, and like windsurf and a better and appreciation. So you've got. Yeah, you got those guys that ex- like appreciate something a little bit extreme and what it takes mm. to do something of that nature. So yeah, it's it's a bit of a mixed bag when you ride there, but most of the time it's you know like you know just ignore the you know the people that aren't a fan because that usually they're like in their mid eighties. Hey, it's usually like, not jealous. to be horrible, yeah. but you know yeah, or just jealousy. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> you got well, I can barely ride in a straight line, and you guys are on rails and rocks and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. Yeah, well, I think that's those type of people that appreciate it, mate. Obviously, another generation that has no understanding of what it actually mm. is or anything mm. like that, yeah. to be honest. So yeah. they'll always be the haters. I've spent millions of pounds to look at the sea, not to you hop around on your bicycle. It must be a yeah. weird thing if you've uh, grown <laughs> yeah. up in an era where you couldn't have that kind of expression. I think I'm just trying to think, like, logically, why would someone in their yeah. 80s and their 70s think like this? Well, it's I probably because guess... there was no other outlet. It was like, you either go play mm. with football yeah. or that's it, go mm. to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. 
Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Um, for those who don't know, um, we've got Mr. Mr. Rocket Rich, as we Rocket Rick, we could call you now, not Rich. <laughs> Rocket, R- Rick Smith, Smith now. Smith. And Rocket Rick, Rick, Rick Smith. That's <laughs> Rocket it. Rick. I'm going to change my Rick handle Smith. and everything. Yeah, I yeah. think it should, I think it should be Rick Smith. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I'll take a ten percent finance fee for everything you make. That's that's <laughs> it. <man. Yeah. laughs> no. Um, so sorry, I've lost my track of thought. So uh, just to give a bit of a backstory, we're going to mm. go right to the to the start. You are the guy, but kind of have no limits as well, which was. Um, previously Team Rocket, I believe. Yeah, we previously, go into, yeah, previously known as, We will yeah. go into the story of that. But first of all, like with everyone, let's go back to where it all began, mate. You know, give okay. us your story. How did how did you get trials in your blood? How Come did it across become... across a bike without a seat. Yeah, what, 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 was <laughs> your, what was your experience into getting into the world? So um, probably like a few riders in the competition scene. My... Um, my dad is a motorbike trials rider and has been for um, probably near enough 40, well, over 40 years now. He's been riding riding yeah, trials. Yeah, yeah, wow. Much and more than our lifetimes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's mad, isn't it? That is incredible, yeah. mate. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. He's um, yeah, a bit of a legend. All right. And, well, there um, you go. Uh, Rich's dad, yeah. if you're listening, mate, shout yeah, out to yeah. you. Good, yeah. Good Rob, Rob Smith is his name. And Rob. He will, he will, yeah, he'll, I'll have to... S- Get to this bit, and you'll love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for bringing him into the world, Rob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go and, on. Um, so basically, yeah, that's the reason I, um, um, you know, ride trials. And um, it was my older brother that got into it first. And um, I remember going out on a, like a training session. My dad and my brother would go, you know, out on the bikes, and I'd just go along on my mountain bike, you know, like, and just watch, you know, my brother hop around and stuff like that. And I uh, think, you know what? I want to give that a go. And, uh, you know, then naturally dad turns around like, oh, brilliant. Like another one that wants to ride trials, you know. I didn't even force him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's it. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. For, for me, it was very much like more of an organic thing. Whereas I think with my, my older brother, it was a bit more like, I was like, go on, try, try this, try that, you know. Yeah, and yeah. See, You know, and then like my brother Dan got, you know, good, like really good. Uh, in the olden, you know, competition days. And um, so, yeah, then I just naturally, I suppose, wanted to do what my older brother was doing and, you know, seeing what, how like cool he was riding a bike and, you know, and then started going out with my dad and my brother riding and, yeah. That's the whole family like how, affair. Mm. Yeah, like that, that's how yeah, no, it sounds know, really cool. Yeah. And it was just mountain, like normal mountain bikes, obviously then, you know, it wasn't, it, it, there were trials bikes around, but, um, we didn't have actual trials bikes at the time. I think my f- the first bike I did trials on was a Muddy Fox something or other. I wouldn't be able to re- like, know the model. It was just an old, old yes, It wasn't Fox. a trials bike. As a no, lot of no, us no. realise, yeah. we we're all starting on bikes that weren't built yeah. to do that. Sort of jump bike. The yeah. jump bikes were like mountain bikes, but just with a smallish frame. If you yeah, it was just mountain yeah. bikes. Chop the seat post real low and just, you know, drop that seat and... Hope it doesn't go up your ass, basically. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, as we all know, it happened. You yeah. Know, especially, yeah. Especially the very pointy <laughs> bit of the seat. That's the worst. <laughs> you know. Back when Muddy Fox would have actually been a decent brand I before still... it got bought out by like yeah. Sports Direct or Argos, whoever's got that now. Yeah, because I thought that they were like. I remember being a kid, being like, "Oh my gosh, Muddy, Muddy Fox. Fox!" Like, yeah, yeah it was but, cool. Right. So, how did it go? You, you know, you got this Muddy Fox kind of mountain bike style. Where was the evolution from that to actual? trials bike i think i did about because i got very very quickly i went jumped straight into competition trials um mainly like because my dad doing the comps and stuff like that and uh, i think he went along to a bike competition just to watch just like out of curiosity i think and as a fan of trials i think you heard about the mountain bike stuff and then um my brother then went along first and started, did a few comps and then I tagged along afterwards. And um, I'm not sure how m- many comps I did. It was maybe like a year's worth of like the Hampshire and Essex uh, clubs when they were running BBTC. however long ago. <laughs> <You'd know> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I maybe did about a year of those um, before then getting some sort of trials bike. Hmm. Nowadays, I, well, I mean, it's, I, I posted um, 
maybe a little while ago, I posted a couple of pictures of, uh, of my first ever trials bike, which was, well, it's being polite to call it a trials bike, really. <laughs> <laughs> the first bike you kind of did yeah. more trials on? <laughs> yeah, basically. And it still had a little seat. The seat was petite like uh, you remember those really mm -hmm. ridiculously small seats yeah which is uh, there's no point those being there like, Abs it absolutely really... it's just so that but, you could tell your mum i does have a seat yeah i do have a seat yeah and you don't get walkers you know walkers by going where's your seat mate yeah. but um yeah it was called a mission jumping jack and yep. it was basically just an alley box. For, I'm pretty sure it was alley. Uh, it might have been, might have been still. I don't know, but it was just a box frame, alley box frame, or still box frame bike. It just, you know, that square tubing. Learn. When you say box frame, yeah, square, yeah, yeah square yeah. tube basically. I can like and, picture um, it. I can picture you and beating going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, yeah, 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 and. Um, yeah, that was my first official trials bike. And it, yeah, maybe like that was my transition from and it, from the Muddy Fox to, and it was a 20 inch jumping jack. I don't think they made it to, like, I think they made maybe like three of them or something like that. They, I don't think they made many of these mission jumping jacks. I think I remember, and, to, I think Tom Rankin had one possibly. Did uh, he? he probably, yeah. yeah. I remember, wow. yeah, I remember, well, Tom won't remember me because I was a lot younger, but I remember watching Tom ranking a lot of the comps being like, like he was riding elite, I think at the time. And I was just like, Oh yeah. Huh? How's that? How's he going? Dad, how's it going up there? Like, <laughs> you know, that just I'm... gives you like that motivation, right? When you're in that moment, seeing those people in front of you. Um, yeah. Cause you made a really good point there. You said your dad and your brother, you went to like a competition. And obviously mm. that was the only place people really met mm. in, in trials. Um, yeah. Whereas I like to think now it's different. Yeah, you know. it's different. In some ways, we've, we've mentioned this before, it's a little bit backwards now because obviously, at least when you've done the competitions, it was very much right. Here's the calendar. You've got to post your entry forms to here mm. uh, right. and do X, Y. You've got to go get your ACU license and whatever. Yeah. It's all very ACU, much like... You know, license. you know what days you're riding yeah. and where and yeah. that far in the year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whereas now, it's like anyone about on Sunday. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, it's in... <laughs> The WhatsApp yeah. group. Oh, was it a WhatsApp group? Was it in a Facebook Messenger? Oh, I haven't got Facebook. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. You were yeah. riding in my hometown and I didn't hear about it. Yeah. You're like, yeah. oh man, yeah. I'm so sorry. Like, you know, yeah. he tries to. Um, which kind of leads leads into a little bit of the conversation. You, you started at the competitions there. You recently mm -hmm. did the first competition of the year. This year? Uh, bike Trial Academy. Oh, oh, this, oh yeah, the, oh, this uh, uh, yeah, the, the most first, recent one. Yeah, yeah the most yeah. recent one. Yeah. I'm saying uh, you did the first, first one yeah, this year. Yeah, a few How weeks, did, like, few weeks ago how did you get on um at the bike trial there uh, i came second uh, see that's quite a modest reaction yeah. like oh what competition i don't i can't really record it in a competition yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I came second you know I came second. sometimes i like to be good with dates and when i don't remember the date i'm like it was then it's all right. someone's <laughs> yeah. got to be first of the losers mate it's okay <laughs> that's it that's it although i did win the the one before no yeah well, you did <laughs> you did actually win that but Leaning on, that's what I've, I've got about you. You've been going to competitions at a very young age, then. You can yeah, sort of yeah. See yeah, within I'm not your... sure when I started, but it was it was pretty young. Yeah. If you haven't seen um, Rick's riding, then you know go and have a look. It's um, what's the word? Yeah, very textbook kind of on point. Um, what's the word that we were saying the other day? Tom went so oh, I can't even very compy <laughs> consistent <laughs> yeah consistent controlled, controlled you know it's oh, um, that. calibrated all the same it's sort of you can see like yeah comp, you, you've had a lot of area and competition riding I think in that experience and it's very sort of textbook in, in that that manner well I feel very, like you and Tom ride very, very similar that's very cool that's very, that's very <laughs> kind of you to say so but that that's how you'd started like not for everyone like we didn't it was competitions mm. that kind of got you yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, did a bit of street riding when I like got into like a young teenager age, like, yeah. like 12, 13 and a few other riders were kind of like growing in the like the area where I was living, where I live. And and um, so, yeah, it was cool to then go up my older brother and his friends who rode trials, you know, so it was like, oh, come, like, you know, <laughs> can yeah. I go and like, just tag along. So. But yeah, it was all like, you know, then when I started, it was just all about the competitions and like, that's the way we trained, like I trained and practiced was 
right? You've got to get over the super slippy log, which is basically ice, and then up some roots, and you've got to hop your way up this super muddy hill, which has been rained on and ridden on for the past three hours. <laughs> so it's like, you know, those, those, that's what the comps were like, you yeah. know, which is very, very, which was really cool. I'm going off on one now. But no, but it's good. Really, no, but... Go on. Sorry, Karen. Which is really cool for me when it came to doing the comp at uh, tri- Charlie's Place, mm. the Bike Trial Academy last year. I think it was last September. Yeah, mm. last year. And uh, that was a very, very new uh, way of doing a competition for me. Like, you know, okay. Because that was your first of the new rules. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's the first of the new, of the new rules, and um, which I, I love. And, yeah, I think. That was going to be our next really... question, really. Obviously, you've been in the competition scene from... Uh, from the old rules, I should say, you know, back mm. in the day. Mm. For those who don't know what we're talking about, basically in the competition scene, what it used to be to get through a section, you know, you could five right at the beginning or you could get right into the very, very end, the final gate. And if you put your feet down and obviously you get a five or you get five. It's the same points as putting it down at the start. At the start. <laughs> yeah. so you've done all this yeah. hard work, proper knackered yourself out and they're going, nah, five. Whereas now... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now you get points yeah. for going through the, through the gates. So, of course, you can mm. then accumulate some points and then towards yeah. the end, yeah, you then might screw up at the end, but all your previous work doesn't... You're actually like rewarded for, for yeah, the effort still, that you made. That's, you're still that's the word it. I use all the time. Like when, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. About it. I think, well, one, I think it ha- um, helps people, especially the young ones coming up in the trials game, which is great to see at the trials academy and you know, obviously other trials you know um areas and uh i think for their i suppose like the self-esteem almost mm. as well mm. and that confidence yeah. like to be able to get halfway through a section and then maybe five be like no wait you still got 30 points yeah like yeah. you know rather mm. than okay five next you know, it, which is what it was like. It does when make we you were wonder, competing. like, why it did stay for so long like that. Because I remember I used yeah. to go to comps, and I've never ever been any There's good at comps. Still but a I was lot. still like, mm. uh, I'm not. I can do that. I'm not going to be able to do that though. I don't even know why I ever turned up because I just never could get through to the section. Well, that, that's it. I think deep down there is something that's a little bit like, uh, it just uh, it just keeps knocking away at you. You know, like yeah. you do get to the end of a section, and then right, okay, yeah, you slip on a really slippy route or something just wipes you out and that's it game over and it's just like it time after time yeah i think that's mm. obviously that route you you went into competitions i think if i'd started trials doing competitions i would have left like faced mm. on those some some of those rules like you'd be like well yeah that isn't fair that sucks mm. i'm not enjoying that i got into trials because of the, the people you know we didn't mm. the same thing like you had your father and, and family around you some of us had none of that influence. We were just like, I school just saw friends. a guy. Yeah. Like um, friends of friends. A school friend. So it, it is really, it is really nice to know that the, uh, that the competition scene did have that influence on things. Cause I thought it had the opposite, but of course that's just my opinion. I, I just didn't like mm. it as a child and I, it didn't appeal to me at all based mm. upon some of those rules mm. really. Mm. Um, mm. So from a, I think always think that now this is hopefully going to change trials to progress further. Yeah. Yeah, and I tr- I truly do think it will do, especially like I said earlier with the with the younger ones. Mm. You know, they do have that opportunity to still achieve something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. Not, yeah, which is amazing. You know, because yeah, like some of us, we, we grew up riding trials without that really. Like, yeah, you knew deep down. Oh, okay, I got to the end of section, but something didn't quite quite like quite go to plan. Which I have a little story about that actually, <laughs> but, um, and but now I think it is different, and it's it's great to see so many riders. And again, you do get to the end of the day, and go, oh sweet, I accumulated four hundred points, and like you know, which is that good, sounds lovely. cooler well, than it, I got zero it's, points. It's good <laughs> yeah, as well for exactly. people that yeah. aren't competition minded, um, yeah. and they have an objective measure to come away with. Because yeah. otherwise, if you're not competition minded, if you do go just for yourself, because I know that not everyone likes the idea of competing, so it's nice they mm. have somewhere to measure themselves against if they do do them semi-regularly some of the best riders don't like competing it just doesn't mm, yeah. appeal to them yeah. you know yeah um yeah. sorry wheeler i'm calling you out on that one <laughs> but he's like sam will is an amazing rider oh absolutely yeah. incredible yeah. like 
yeah. on another level. But really he, he just knows. I know sometimes <laughs> he'll get there and be like, just, just don't feel like it. Which is yeah, oh, well, like, 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 like the one that's just gone. Yeah, that, exactly right. But that's. Totally I was like, okay. did he not turn up? Because I saw it on the scene. You're like, did he not turn up? And I was like, no. He was but there. that's totally okay. <laughs> yeah. And I bet he had yeah. a banging day still riding his bike and having a laugh that's with it, everyone. Because and his friends are there and the camaraderie. You just have a good time. So it, yeah. it is all personal goals is what I'm, I'm getting at here and I think what yeah. you mentioning earlier when you're first starting you're going with your dad and your brother and people go to competitions like oh I just I want to get through these two gates or do that mm. whereas I find myself going out going that line in my head I'm going to get that today yeah that's, that's that kind it. of yeah. uh, less of an expectation perhaps uh, on mm. um, when you're setting yourself personal goals rather than having to be like oh, I need to win and beat this person you're only beating that's your, it yeah um, yeah beating yourself so and that's the best person to have a competition with is yourself yeah so when obviously because you many people will know you as team rocket rocket rich so it's, <laughs> yeah. it's trials uh will display of course but how did that come about if you've then been from competition because i can't really pinpoint anyone who's really been big into competition to then go down that route almost yeah that's a really good point actually and, and uh, yeah so it, it started at team rocket didn't it that's where it yeah. began that yeah of, do you want to give us the so Team Team Rocket originally had nothing to do with bikes because okay. I think I, I can't remember what age I was. It was I was maybe 16, 17. And yeah. I think the whole competition and biking thing slowly started to take a bit of a back seat because I basically started then pursuing a career in dancing. Yeah. Um, which is your like your main gig now, right? That's basically which is is. yeah, which is my like my main profession. Or yeah, job, this is what I love yeah. to uncover because like this, we try to do that on the show as well, that every trials rider has like a different unique profession and that's yeah. pretty different. So we'll, we'll come back to that. Identity. We've, we've got to <laughs> yeah. dig into that a bit more. We'll, yeah, we'll okay. Yeah. 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 So then I, yeah. So that, that, you know, that time happened, uh, I mean, it's still happening, but, uh, maybe several years went past where I was focusing on that. And I, so then, Team Rocket was, you know, that's where I, you know, called it like Team Rocket. It was originally just Rocket, my business, my brand. It was just originally Rocket because, you know, we were Rocket. And, yeah, yeah. and uh, then the team added in front to kind of create a bit more of a community feel about it. Mm. So, you know, you're all part of a team and yeah. we all do this together. And um, so, yeah, time, time went on and I got a text message from a good friend of mine, Tom McMillan, who also rides trials and uh is he uh, sent it to a few of us my brother and so on and um it said hey guys it's been a little while but i wondered if you guys fancied putting on a bike show at my old school so in my head i was like cool like it's great to hear from him but i was also like i haven't really ridden trials properly for about seven or eight years like maybe seven to nine years something like that so i was like naturally i'm a bit i, I like taking opportunities as and whenever they arise, like arise, so you weren't willing to say no. Basically, you were like, "I'll basically, make this work." Basically, I didn't work. want to say no. Yeah. I was like, "Yeah, you know what? Good for you." Yeah. Mate. yeah, and I still had a trials bike or some sort of trials bike in the shed at the time. I can't remember what it was, and uh, so I thought, jack. "Yeah, probably." <laughs> yeah, still that. <laughs> oh, could you imagine? That would you be. Ride, that is going to make. By the way, that's going to make so. a great video. If anyone can find one of them, let, let's get if, one built yeah. up and start yeah. a mission jumping jack series and get different riders. To All ride the classic down. mission bikes. Anyway, <laughs> progenies <laughs> and reefers. A reefer. What a yeah, weird name for a bike. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, um, sorry, Rick. Go on. No, no, that's no, right. <laughs> so you got about you uh, had a bike laying around and yeah, yeah I had a bike laying around. I thought oh, I better, you know, get back on it and you know remember how to ride trial or you know get the balance and everything back. So um, yeah, and then maybe about three or four months later on down the line, after just like riding every day, <laughs> we just went into this school field had a load of pallets and tom at the time had a like just a low load of trailer thing and we just pulled that up in the van and just screwed pallets together and you know set up all these different obstacles yeah. and we just it was it was myself my brother dan and my brother frank tom and nathan all riding like we just all had a right laugh riding around in the show and i i hosted i emceed the the you know the the show whilst yeah. everyone else was riding 
And, oh, so you didn't um, ride? You were actually just um, No, I didn't actually ride, which was, look, because on the day, I arrived, obviously had the bike and... Uh, <laughs> I'd have and, been, uh, yeah, go all on. this practice I know, going I into know. it. Yeah. But then it was like, oh, we need someone to basically talk what we're doing whilst everyone, like, you know, we had no head mics or anything like that. It was just, you know, just a little hand mic yeah. that we nabbed from the event organiser yeah. and the speaker. And all like everyone's looking at each other like, well, who's gonna who's do gonna it? <laughs> and then they all pointed at me like, well, you're the performer, like you're the one used to being on stage in front of people. In front of, like, yeah, you know? I know that. So yeah. I was like, well, then I'm doing it. Then I'm not, you know. So it's like, oh man, I went there to ride, and then I spent all this time just trying to like get back some of the trials technique, and then I ended up spending the whole time on a microphone, which was okay. This I didn't mind. The best MCs are trials riders themselves. I'm not just saying that, but <laughs> it does work. <laughs> but, you know, from shows of experience that um, 100% the best MCs actually trials riders themselves. You know, they've mm. been on the bike. They're behind the behind know the what bike. to talk about. Yeah, but yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and uh, I can only think what was going through your mind then, being like, but I am a trials rider. Yeah. Like I want them to yeah. see me ride the bike. Yeah, yeah. Not just yeah. go. Oh, I That's know what I'm I want to show about. off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess at that point you hadn't done both because I've never commentated without the bike. I think I, I wouldn't want to. I have this excuse of being able to be like, oh, all right, just get my. Sorry, guys. I'm the one with the microphone on, so you can hear me breathing yeah. whilst I'm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Then, <laughs> it's that kind of excuse. Um, did you realise at that point afterwards? You're like, do you know what? I think I can do this. Was that was that yeah. the first? Because it yeah, sounds like you weren't riding trials until someone said, "Can you do a show?" Yeah, basically, yeah. I mean, because I was so focused on my other, you know, career and everything, like yeah. the career I was doing at the time. And, um, and what year was this? Sorry, so I'm just getting a gauge of timeline. This, I think, yeah, I, I I was trying to go through my head edge before coming on. I think this was 2015 to, or 2016 when mm. we did this random one-off show. Um, and it was at the end of doing that show because we all looked quite legit. You know, I had like the Team Rocket T-shirts and stuff like that. Well, you already everyone... had a brand. You yeah, were already just had a expanding brand. expanding so... what that was um, providing. Basically, yeah. yeah. And we had, I must have had three or like two or three teachers and like other event people come up to me at the end because they were like, no, I'm the one that just talks talk on the mic. And then yeah. uh, they said, oh, so oh, this is amazing. Love the show. Thank, you know, thanks for coming. And you know uh, all the kids loved it do you, is this something you do you know is this you know do you do this uh yeah and in, so yeah it's in my head i, I didn't even st i didn't even stutter i was like, yeah, yeah yeah this is what we do and um obviously at the time it was a definite no like we just all came together as old school trials friends and put on a show because tom used to go to that school we're like it was <laughs> friends of friends uh, having a laugh in front yeah, of basically. yeah giving the kids a great entertainment yeah that's it. And then from there, I started a new business with the Urban Displays, which is what is now now known as the Urban Displays. And it mounted bike stunt show. Which yeah. has also changed its name quite recently. So you were, it was the, you said it was Rocket, went to sort of Team Oh, yeah. Rocket, so it was, yeah. And then sorry, you went on to your Urban Rocket. Display team with yes, still under yeah. sort of Rocket. At uh, that point, or? uh at, So as at this present time, yeah. it's two separate entities now okay, I suppose. right so that so um whereas have, have no limits and everyone's rocking their stuff but have no limits is um was originally the motto just like the slogan for team rocket ah, it was just the yeah, you know yeah, tagline yeah. would put on to everything and mm -hmm. um and it was not until maybe about a year and a half ago it was a bit of a brainwave i was like you know what i think have no limits needs to be the brand it needs to be the brand and not Team Rocket. I don't mm. know why. It just felt right. It made sense. And other people I would speak, I spoke to, said, "Yeah, it makes sense." I, I agree. Yeah. yeah, we do too, mate. Yeah, I think that's cool. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you do. Yeah, that's cool. No, really. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I and think then, that one sticks quite well. You know that kind of, and it's very. Um, it's a broad statement. I mean that mm. in a positive way because, like you say, I'm sure you're supporting trials riders um and a little bit into dancing as well which i'm hoping you might talk to us a little, bit, a little about. bit more on this is what i want to know yeah, yeah. yeah. so um <laughs> yeah. you're a trials rider now we've established you've got an urban display team which is, is incredible and um i know how fun that is it is to do so keep on keep on uh, plowing through 
Thanks. Um, yeah, we'll all come together soon. I know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's still growing, man. All the stuff that we see uh, you putting out is great, and a good, good, uh, good group of ambassadors and, and riders there um, as well. Um, but we wanted to find out a little bit for those who don't know. Rich is actually a professional dancer, and there's clips of this <laughs> on your Instagram as well, so people bam, can go bam, over and bam, see. Bam. Yeah, <laughs> see. There I we thought he, we, we were going to ask him to like do a bit, but I thought, nah, it's a chat yeah. show, really. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> what? Well, I have to go to work now. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and Tom brought up some really interesting uh, questions yeah, yeah, no, we'll, earlier we'll about it, yeah. this, and we'll, we'll sort of okay. get um, get into it. So, I mean, yeah, how does your what does your day how, look like? Yeah, yeah, what does your day look like? How did you become <laughs> a dancer? And like, well, you know, I just wake up, I do my hair, <laughs> <laughs> just comes out with a whole different persona. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let me get straight with you, yeah. right? <laughs> Oh man, now I'm getting hot in it. Oh uh, mate, you wouldn't believe it. In this, we have to shut the windows in my room um, oh, so that fair. the noise is coming in. It's like a greenhouse. I don't know if you can yeah. see it. Anyway, I'm sorry. Tell That's us, okay. yeah, tell us about your your dancing career. So, uh, well, yeah, I. He's like, oh, um, a norm, normal day or like... Uh, oh, yeah, any... sorry. Well, I guess how, I asked... suppose how you got started, but then like, oh, what okay. does your like, day, day to day kind of look yeah. like, really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so how I got started quite simply was, well, I took performing arts and like, I knew I wanted to entertain from a young age. Mm. Okay. I knew that that's what I wanted to do. I, yeah. I liked trying to be funny when I was younger and at family events and all, you know, all that sort of malarkey. I was always, you know, the twat trying to make jokes. <laughs> that not many people laughed at <laughs> or just, you know, goof, goofing around, oh, you know. We know yeah. all about that, mate. Yeah, go on. That's it. <laughs> and then, uh, so I naturally took drama and dance and performing arts and all that sort of stuff at school. And then, uh, Basically, a, a group, uh, a dance group came in to do a workshop in one of my classes, and I instantly fell in love with what they were doing, like how they moved and what they were teaching and everything like that. So then I very quickly started taking some of their classes because they were local to Poole and Bournemouth. And so then I just instantly fell in love with it. And it was like trials. I instantly fell in love with trials. So then that's all I thought about every single day that's all i wanted to do yeah. i didn't want to do school work i wanted to ride my bike and this was the same but like, i didn't really i didn't when i started dancing and fell in love with it this all i wanted to do so all i did every break time every lunch time i was in the dance studio i was very fortunate at the school i was at uh there was a really nice dance studio and every every i didn't spend much time with my friends during like the last year of school because I was every break time, every lunch time, just practicing in the studio, you wow, know? Wow, yeah. Um, which I suppose like, you know, pays off in the long run. <laughs> yeah, 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 so you've got um, like your, your 10,000 hours, as they say, because obviously you're just so laser hmm. focused in and just going. Yeah, 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 it was like break time, I danced, and then the next lesson, okay, you dance again. I was like, this is epic, you know? Yeah. And, um, so then took classes and then the, the guys who run the company at the time uh, asked if I wanted to be in one of their shows, you know, as one of their, in their performance group, their crew or whatever you want to call it. And that, I was like, what a step up. Like this, like, like the film, what <laughs> I a made step it into up, a dance crew. You know? yeah. Yeah. yeah, literally. Yeah. I was yeah. like, and at the time, I think I was maybe 17 at the time. And yeah, it was just like, epic like that next step right? mm. i took their classes and practice 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 oh do you want to you know be an understudy for, i was just an understudy for their show so then showtime came and the guy who actually was supposed to do my part arrived so i was like so what does that mean for me i was a bit heartbroken i was like oh man the guy walked in who's doing like, so you're actually hoping part. someone doesn't turn up i forgot Basically, that there's yeah, people in that role isn't there i was gonna say is that what an under what's an understudy? Yes. so yeah. sorry yeah. so you got the main so you got the main lead, like the main role like yeah. the guy who's playing that character yeah. and then you have the understudy which was me at the time so if something happened to this one i step in oh, okay. they have every theater has that especially yeah. west end in london oh. they often have oh, yeah, two yeah. understudies right so yeah. there are people getting paid to not be in the show but to know yeah. all of the parts to know all the, the, well, all on the, the basis all the... that they're either ill or they're broke yeah, exactly or they're yes or they're broken yeah. Yeah. broken <laughs> yeah. ill yeah. accident <laughs> Imagine if they're late, they're just, late no, to a the show. Name, the name just threw me a bit. It's like understudy. Like, what does that... What, mm. It doesn't sound like it's... it's yeah, I guess, that's what it, it was is. like backup, but yeah, yeah I suppose it's probably, yeah, yeah, it's probably yeah. got some etymology elsewhere or whatever. But, um, but <laughs> I, 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 I like that, yeah. 
Sorry, we've got so, another uh, so the guy, the guy comes along, right. and then yeah, you, yeah. you don't. Yeah. So like, we, I hadn't seen, I haven't seen this guy in any rehearsals or anything like that. So then he walks in on show day, and I'm like, instantly like, oh. I put all this work in, and I'm not going to be performing. But really, really quickly, the um, artistic director of the company have come up to me and said, "Do not worry, you're going to do the afternoon performance, and he's going to do the evening performance." So I was like. No way! Like I was yeah, like, you're sharing yeah. the load, basically. So basically, shared the load, yeah. Because oh, wow, well, that's cool. She man. knew that I put in all that work, and you know, didn't want me to not do it. So, and usually the afternoon performance is basically just a warm up for the evening, anyway. <laughs> but <laughs> but it still meant a lot to me at the time. Mm. Um, so from there, I did the show and everything like that, and then a bit more training and time went on, and then cut a long story short, I started assisting in teaching with them and learned to teach like dance and like what I was doing yeah. everything like that from those guys. And then, um, yeah, so that's where that, like my dance career kicked off from there basically is then started teaching, teaching with those guys and um, yeah. And then. Nice. Yeah. Kindly fell into it in a nice route by the sounds of it. Yeah. 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 I mean, it wasn't the typical, like most dancers I speak, a lot of dancers I speak to is like, yeah, I was, I started when I was three years old. I was like, like wow, okay. Like <laughs> I started when I was seventeen. Well, like, people keep telling us know. about trolls though. Like you guys, like when I was a kid, my dad's like my dad didn't take me to anything like that. My dad thought I was an idiot when I rode a trolls bike. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it's so nice to hear. And my these... dad be like, "So why is your boy not go to sea? Like what's that about?" Yeah, <laughs> even I remember my na nan saying me like that. Be like, "Could you not have enough money to get a seat with that one?" They'd be yeah. like, "Oh dear." But um, <laughs> no, yeah. Well, what I mean is, there's so few people. Like you, you obviously studied it. You worked towards. You had an idea of what you wanted to do. In, in yeah oh I knew, I knew i knew at the drop of a hat that's why that's what do. everyone yeah. does that's yeah. a tough thing you know i think i still know my men friends who are my age who are like what am i doing with my life you mm. know um so yeah man that's really inspiring to know just you're keeping at it and just that you kept to to what you you sort of loved yeah i think what pushes me is that, like i like to stay i like to stay strong and fit and stuff like that and i'm still working in like dancing with these guys who are like 1920 and then i'm still like they're just like Are they show you up yet no like, <laughs> that's, that's the annoying thing i'm like come on like i'm <laughs> over 10 years older than you guys and you guys are breathing out of your ass over there for five minutes and i'm still like come on yeah. like, i just like want to kick them up but then it's just you know i think it's different for some it's you know uh, that's just the I hope I'm some wired. of your students listen to this anyway, Rick, just so I that do. they I'm get a background, send it to them and tell them, like, a little <laughs> background of uh, how cool, how cool of a dude that you are in the trial scene as well as a, a dancer. Um, we didn't know. So any I, I wanted to know. I was thinking about this earlier, right? How much has that then influenced you on the bike? Because everyone has their different backgrounds, like bike-wise. You know, when we spoke with Martin Ashton, like rhythm in in his head, oh, Martin yeah. Ashton was like, "I'm moto trials. Whenever I yeah. go do a move, I think about moto trials." So mm. for yourself, is it rhythm based? You know, obviously you've got a level of flexibility there. So does that? Uh, you I could just see like on the beat, yeah. side up, gas, yeah. Yeah. Boom, like, boom, yeah. boom, yeah, front hops. Yeah. Sorry, I'm out of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it must influence it in some way, right? I think, yeah. I, I actually had to try and think about this a little while ago because I did, the, I was out riding with Tom who started the show with me, Tom, Tom, by the way, I want to just make sure I say is probably the biggest, if not the only reason the urban displays are actually a thing because he engineered the whole thing. Wow, shout and um, if shout he out it watches to, it, yeah, so shout massive out to shout Tom. Out to Tom. So, what bike is he riding again? Remind me. Uh, it was one, it was Simon Whitby's old See, bike. See, there uh, we go. I just uh, to, I know people buy the green bikes. Azonis or something like that, yeah, which Simon I don't know how Whitby's, you pronounce it. Um, <laughs> old Azonis, amazing bike. I'm Azonis, so glad he got that. I remember seeing yeah. him at uh, Bike Academy going, oh. Simon's bike. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. yes, yeah. Tom. So well, just some, a shout out to that. that do a big that shout awesome out to, to Tom so. there. Thank you, mate, for, yeah. for doing that for, for Rick. Yeah. And um, yeah, we were out riding. And so I went up to back on this thing. Didn't quite make it. Whereas I made someone else might have just fallen off backwards. I kind of like rolled uh, and he'll be able to tell you this as well. I just rolled up the bike. Like I was doing like some sort of like body wave roll thing. <laughs> like, like a yeah. worm. Yeah, it was, it, it, a vertical and I was worm. On, I was on the back and I was just like, yeah, it was like doing the worm on the bike. And I just rolled up the bike and just 
ended up on top of this rock or log or something, whatever. I can't remember what it was. I just remember doing this move and Tom's, I got down and he's just like, what did you just do? <laughs> you just danced up the bike and made it onto the, it was, yeah, it was. So there is was, an element of crossover. So there's, uh, yeah, that and I think like Tom mentioned earlier, like having that flexibility uh, definitely helps, you know, being able to get I've a bike right underneath. Always one of that, because like when you see like extreme example, like you see Charlie Rolls ride, obviously he's so mm. quick with his body, like and able to sort of twist like into another position or whatever. Yeah, and I'm thinking so that must be such an advantage. But then, yeah, the carryover, you would you're very similar in that way because that's <laughs> the dynamics of of how you move and also the yeah, energy that so, it requires yeah. as well. Um, yeah, some people aren't built that way. You know, I'm very stiff and just straight angles you know but that's what than... i think trials is quite a stiff sport no right it's, it's quite ri- you can be quite rigid and still ride mm. yes mm. if you know what i but mean I think the best kind of riders especially once you get to a comp level there is definitely a lot more i think they call it in um isn't it fitness in like weights and that's like transverse plane which is like where you move like when you go to the gym for instance yeah. pick up weights everything's in quite a straight linear motion mm. and it's very yeah. rarely do you actually twist and the same mm. probably could be said for the streets yeah. Everything on the streets is just straight, but well, mm. your competition background, you probably have to say it's a lot more twisting to be able to yeah, oh, balance yeah. points and everything. Oh, I de- yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah, which is why when it comes to street stuff, I definitely kind of suck a bit because <laughs> I like yeah, it's 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 a different. It is a different kind of riding. It's it's the same but different. Yeah, you know, no, I, different. yeah, I get it. I mean, like I say, I can only last maybe five ten minutes on some rocks, just doing those sort of. Sort of hops, <laughs> but give me a forty-nine inch wall, and I'll be uh, I'll be happy. You know? That's it. Yeah, yeah. And I think, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I definitely agree. Well, I definitely and you've got a quite a good little um, mixture. So you were saying earlier, you ride down by um, you know by the seaside, lots of rocks around you. Mm. Um, and you recently were in um, a video with with Ben Moore and Jack Carthy, which is a nice yeah, little yeah. discipline of variation there which i thought was fantastic i'm so glad they kept you on your 20 as well just to kind of yeah see the the boast there yeah um, the variety. what was the an area behind that have you got are you sort of good friends with ben i know you're friends with jack so how did that come about yeah so, so ben's basically like one of my greatest friends and oldest friends of all time and shout out to him if he randomly watches this as well <laughs> so, yeah well we can't uh, we're gonna, yeah. we're, don't worry we're, we're, we're going we're getting to the mountain bikers that's we're coming getting... we've got mountain bikers lined up um, in the future, oh, so we are branching. Amazing. Um, I think, and ben, I know you'd love to do this. So. Absolutely, and that's the other one. When he this. sees it, he realizes, "Hey, I could probably do that." So yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're coming for you. So, ben. Anyway, so yeah, he's a ch- uh, childhood friend. Like we've known each other since we were like five or six years old or something like that. And um, he, yeah, again, they just gave me a call one day. He's like, "How do you fancy riding with Jack Carthy?" I was like, "I mean, I mean, that would be pretty <laughs> epic." Yeah, like you know, multi world champion and. Uh, it was like, oh, cool. So we're doing this video. And I was like, oh, oh it's real. Like, it's actually happening. <laughs> oh, for we're a not just going like, for a ride. I thought it was just like, yeah, yeah. It was like, oh, yeah, cool. You thought you yeah, we were just going to hang out? Like, basically, I thought we would go up to Shetley Green or like that up yeah. there. But he ended up coming down to us this way or down to me. And um, yeah, so I get, was in this video with, with Ben and Jack and um, as a special guest. Yeah, it was like, a lovely you know, variation. Like on the in special. There. Yeah. And um I mean, it was just an awesome day. You know, I obviously got to ride with my best mate and yeah. the world champion and, uh, you know, watch how they both ride. Yeah, so well. it's, it's amazing to watch <laughs> them, let alone just get to to ride with them. And for some context there, if you haven't seen it yet, I think you can go uh, find it on uh, uh, on Rich's Instagram or Carthy's. There's a, a yeah, great yeah. video of those guys on a, on a, on a day out. Um, and uh, I love, yeah, love the variation that they've they've got on that um i wanted to find out as well what what was your day to day that we said like mm. now that you're in okay, you've got yeah. trials you're a dancer it's all kind of made its way in, into uh, one big nice mesh now i, I would say yeah so what does your day to day look like uh i try i make sure i train one or the other things i you know love to do body or cycling um, or you mean dancing or cycling yeah but it, either i have some classes going on so it's my day-to-day is really kind of all over the place especially at the moment with everything that's mm. gone on but um, yeah yeah this is why we're interested so many people's lives have changed massively yeah you know? yeah i mean normally it would it would be you know get up and 
train and then work on the business and then go do two or three classes or something like that in the evening and then you know the cycle starts again and um but now it's a little bit a little bit quieter and um basically just get up and like this morning for taking this morning for example get a ride in be on with you guys yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> do a load of business work and then train in the evening or uh if it, if it was yesterday do a, a couple of dance classes on zoom <laughs> that's what i was going to say i was going to ask that are you have did you have to move move to the virtual world obviously as a dancer you were like oh i need to oh yeah stick very, in my classes. Very, very very quickly yeah yeah it was just like what do i do to, to not straight i didn't do it straight away i think i took like a month of just like okay well this is happening you know what i'm just gonna chill out <laughs> <laughs> and also a difficult time because yeah. shows were like there was none in 2020 and yeah i know yeah. for some um you know like rpm and rich that was a very hard time that was his yeah his full-time gig you guess how he yeah. paid his life yeah uh, paid his way yeah. through life sorry so uh, did that have a well even having a month off i mean that's still that's still i'm sure would have been a bit of a calibration for you but there's definitely probably wasn't a oh, yeah it? absolutely I mean, when i say take back, a month off assessing the situation and then go right how do i best approach this yeah yeah it, basically yeah i mean i was kind of I mean, I say I, I still kind of just conditioned and tr like worked out and stuff in the garden like twice a day just so I could go to sleep at night. Um, yeah. But yeah, I kind of just, I suppose, yeah, just sat back and thought about like the brand and the business and contemplated like what's going on with the shows, of course, and, you know, the dance stuff and just generally riding because obviously it was that, you know, you couldn't leave the house. So it was just like, okay well what, what do i you know what do i do here and you know i i suppose also subconsciously took that time to not think about it at the same at the same time like just yeah, yeah. take some pressure off of myself and because well, i'm very good hands, at hands wasn't it a lot well that's it like for for every every single one of us it was just everything yeah. was out of our hands and out of our control really so um, it was a nice time, but also yeah, difficult with the with the shows and everything like that. And and at that at that year, we were lining up to have our personally like our show for our show, the best year yet. But that's what I thought was a difficult time for for the team. You know, everyone mm. that was going yeah. towards that. But in a more positive like now, what what's what's the rest of this mm. year looking like? What's the future going? Have you have you got shows back on your calendar yet? What what yeah, were you hoping we, to yeah. to expect? Yeah, definitely. Uh, actually, looking at quite a cool and like a good, good year. Hopefully for shows. Fantastic. Uh, got got a few booked in and starting to get into schools and stuff like that in my local area, and um, which is really really nice because it's something I wanted to I've wanted to do for quite quite some time is to reach out to those you know like to the like younger students and stuff you know, and kind of show them you can fail dance and become a professional dancer. You can not be very <laughs> academic, but run a business and you know put on bike shows because you have a passion and a drive to ride your bike and get paid for it which is nice you know and mm -hmm. i think um yeah i mean that's a whole nother conversation about the you know the way i suppose making it a career work and stuff like that yeah yeah it's so yeah. hard sport to to do and everyone's doing their you know different ways and, and different approaches what i'm finding obviously there's so many display teams now that we have that's what yeah. i find astounding every time like we get people so, on there are like so it's... many display teams what actually <laughs> yeah. makes me laugh so much is quite often those display teams are booked so far away from their locals and someone else is going oh. to do a show <laughs> so it's yeah, like yeah. me and rich oh, did a show yeah, yeah, yeah. me and rich did a show in kent in essex like last week or two weeks ago and i'm thinking there's definitely more local display teams here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just like the way that... Is, so I'm, yeah. I'm hope, I want to get to this point I've had in my head. I don't know what I'm saying out loud now, but I was like, this place where all the display teams are on this site and it's like, which is your local one? You know, you get, this guy's yeah. our local rider. Yeah. I don't know if... Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, suppose yeah. in business, though, it doesn't necessarily work because if you've no, already had no. one and you've had an experience of one, you know, you buy the people, don't you? And That's it, yeah. It's like the yeah. guy yeah. who fixes your car, but he's on the other side of town. Like, it's you're going to go back to him because you know he's going to get the job done right. It's just annoying yeah. things. It's like, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter what, you always have to travel so... I always travel so far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fine, just build the client. You're fine. Yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> it, you know, it, it gets no done that way. Um, but anyway... I'm like, yeah, really looking forward to hopefully the, the future of your display shows, mate. I know you probably took a hit um, last year 
hoping that you'll um, yeah get quite a few. Uh, and you've just said that you have got some booked in the calendar. I'm wondering if we can maybe get to some time and yeah, try and get yeah, some behind yeah. the scenes videos. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's all very very local, really. For um, so it's what I've aimed to do with the sh with my show is um, because I have a lot of love and respect for just all the trials see like and if you're into trials it's like you know it's it's a hard enough sport to do anyway and if you really are into it and love it like i knew in the beginning it was just out of a respect thing for me i want to keep it as local as possible mm. my show one so i don't have to be tri driving five hours to then put on one show pack up and then drive home it's you know which <laughs> yeah I know some, which i know some people have done maybe bo both of you guys have done something like that but it was you know more of a you know i'll okay, if someone does ask out of the blue or, you know, someone wants, you know, an, a, some cover elsewhere, then I'll do that. It's fine. But I've always wanted to try and keep my show, like, in not in my local town. <laughs> no, that's, that's quite a good idea but, because then you're you know, kind of like an ambassador, like, like locally for that. So that's why I think it really, has more impact. Yeah, you can look up to yeah. go, oh, that's Rich. Like, he's, he's based down here, like, in the Dorset area. This is... And also yeah. cool to be in your hometown slash city or wherever it is, being like, oh. If someone comes across and you and they're hey. like, oh, I saw you at X show or whatever. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. also being like, wow, it, it, um, what am I trying to say? You kind of relate to the person more. They might be doing mm. amazing tricks. Go, oh, yeah, he's from London. And like, are you from here? Yeah, he's from yeah. there. When he's, he's from like, outer space, yeah, man. <laughs> right? Yeah. And you're like, nah, <laughs> yeah. mate, this kid's from Paul and Dorset, bro. 10 minutes bruv. down the road, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, mate, he's just, he lives on the same street as you. He drinks the same tap water. So clearly you <laughs> yeah. can do that. <laughs> do you yeah. know? Yeah. It yeah, has yeah. that true, actually, yeah. relatable factor to it. Because I found that when we did shows in Cornwall with Rich, it was just more impacting. They were like, oh, my mm. gosh, you're from Cornwall. And you're yeah, like, well, yeah, yeah. People yeah, live they expect here, you to be, yeah, <laughs> people out live of this here, bro. World. Yeah. yeah, exactly yeah. what Tom said. Like, oh, you're yeah. out of space. Oh, yeah, I can yeah. believe that. Exactly. <laughs> home crowd as well. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gonna go, I can well, believe that you guys him. aren't human. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my gosh, we love you even more because you're from Cornwall. Like, it has that. And we've been biased every time we like we've. They've interviewed like Nick Goddard and then Joe Baxman. Oh my gosh, you're really close to us. So we're like best yeah, friends yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. is that association factor <laughs> of like. We, it's so true. <laughs> we like people that have certain things in common with us. That's just like human traits, you know? Yeah. And that's trials yeah. biking. That's why we're all good friends because we all ride bikes about seats. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of things <laughs> in common. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of all the things in common. Um, we've got to we've got to move to our quick fire round that we ask all of our guests here, and so we can find out the commonalities amongst all the trial riders. The yeah. only <laughs> it's the only thing that any guest actually expects. It's the quick fire <laughs> round. It's the quick fire. It's round. the not quick fire round. <laughs> right, we should call it that. Round. Yeah, not quick. Um, fire. Do you want to do question one? Yeah, boom, Rich. Where, if you could ride anywhere in the world, would you be riding your trials bike? Paul and Bill. Ooh, he said it. Back. It's local. He's yeah. been. He, he was sat here thinking about these answers before. Portly, yeah, I, I, I was studying. I did some <laughs> yeah, that's the point. Actually, whenever we get someone on, they never need to go. Oh, do where is my favourite spot? It's like, mm. no, you've listened to the podcast. You knew this question was <laughs> yeah. coming. <laughs> yeah. Well done, Rich. I, mean, I appreciate that. No, no. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm extremely fortunate with where I live along the coastline, and there are so mm. many places, but. Portland, even Jack said it's the best place he's ever ridden on the world. So in the it world. is. I've only been well, there once. Well, that's an endorsement. Like, every should be a yeah. plaque as you turn up there, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> the the yeah. best place in the world. We do. But, yeah. Yeah. Right. We, we need what to sort about, this out. We've what got to get about back is it that, I mean, obviously I've, I've been there once, but what about Portland specifically? Like, what can't, what's there that you can't get anywhere else? This, uh, well, maybe the size of the rocks. Yeah. The, like, the quantity. The quantity and, and size. And the quantity, size, and variety, like, I know, uh, rocks are rock, but the variety of it, you yeah. can go there if you're a beginner, and you can ride there if you're a multi-times world champ, like Charlie, right there, and have a damn good time. Like, yeah. You know, you could yeah. be from any sort of background, or any level, and, you know, yeah, find it tough, but have a good time riding Portland, and it will challenge, challenge you. You'll be able to find something within your limits, know. or just outside, at least. Yeah, absolutely. What are you talking about? He has no limits. Well, I, I was literally <laughs> getting to that. Oh, <laughs> no, I was just I was setting the setting the scene. Set it up. <laughs> I, was, I was cheese salad you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, Portland Bill, um, we have got to get there. Effing soon, uh, why Tom. are we not there this Sunday? I, why are we riding London? We're not stupid. There. No, why someone else is there. there this All right, well, that's our own personal dilemma. Uh, so you're at Portland Bill. <laughs> what is the one rich move? What would you be doing? 
Oh, that sexy movie uh, is so good. Oh, f- favorite probably um, roll, roll, uh, riding up to a hook and uh, like wheel swapping. Oh, la pigeon. Near enough, like straight after the the hook, like land and go. Yeah, so it's like a land and a land and a hook. A moving around wheel. A bit. Yeah, so like almost manifesto. So you land and then just boom, go. Don't like some mm. northerners call it a pigeon. Yeah, that's what's called it a pigeon. Really? Yeah, right. Yeah, oh. yeah see, rubble. I knew you. It's not I really don't know any the of these. It's not called it's a pigeon in the south. La pigeon, yeah. It was only the Brum boys that taught me that. Um, I just call it a wheel swap. Yeah, but so it, I got it from the Clacton boys. So obviously it somehow it transverse, like went that way. <laughs> Who's <laughs> creating a catalogue <laughs> yeah, of moves and names? Where the, where, why do we have this? <laughs> we need this. It, well, they used to, you, to tell you what, it's just a little bit of a tangent, but one move they used to call, right, was a salmon flop, right? And everyone's, everyone in trials has done a salmon flop. Just have a little think about it in your heads. Listeners at home, what you think a salmon... Imagine a salmon, salmon like, flop. coming out of the sea, flopping, yeah, right? I got this uh, in the Clapton voice. It's brilliant. You know when you're like gapping like uh, on something? Let's say you're on a thin brick wall or whatever. Yeah. But your tyre isn't actually on the wall. You're at the preceding part of the wall. Oh, God. And oh. you kick. It's almost like when you chain oh. snaps, but oh. you're not... And you flip forward yeah. sort of thing. That's a salmon <laughs> flop. So that's a genuine move now then. I oh. usually get that on like a round, like taking... Yeah, taking like on a round rock or something. Yeah. And, and you, you sort of unweight. You're not actually got any weight down on it. So you, you pedal yeah. and, you have to transfer through, and you flop forward. Wow. Salmon flop. Oh, I love that. So I love that. That's the name. Oh, but I've got to credit the Clacton boys with that. Yeah, I feel like we're going to have to film that I somehow. That Ash Reed, I think it was the first guy I ever heard that from. Ash Reed, if I remembers it. him. Top lad. Oh, I, salmon flops is new to the the trick book. So let's. Try. <laughs> so it's it's a pit. Yeah, you like to do a quick up pigeon wheel yeah. swap, whatever we want to call it. Yeah, Portland even Bill. or hang around in the like hang around in the hook, and you gotta get yourself in the right position and be able to like you know get switch it without up touching the pedal. UCI. Oh yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That always looks so yeah. cool, doesn't it? When people like bend their knees out the way, like so, like they're oh, on this yeah. really steep rock, but their knees are kind of like bent at this weird position to try and make yeah. sure the pedal. I just, I, I, I nice still don't. Yoga at the same time. I can't yeah. really do like hooks like that. I've got a rockman, so it will just break. <laughs> 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 just, they just, they just, that's what I'm saying. My bike lasts longer if I don't do hooks. It's not that's even it. a joke. It does. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and rockman's just made of cheese anyway. Um, Portland so Bill. the Portland Bill, the not so quick fire round. Portland Bill, he's doing his hook. Who are you riding with? Who are you riding with, Rick? Usually, uh, Ian Johnston, want? Dan Jones, or Andre Burton. To be fair, I t- if if he's going to Portland or I'm going to Portland, we tend to let each other know because. Yeah, I mean, we both that love is his him. One, there, is, so. this, this is that is his favorite. Yeah. Place I'm sure he'd get very upset if you went there without letting him know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, like himself, I yeah. he would so. actually. Yeah. yeah, no, no, he's good at letting. He is good though. He's really good at letting other people know. Generally, yeah. with sort of them, be like, oh, we're in it. He goes, why the hell didn't let me go? Oh yeah, we forgot. No, yeah. he's yeah. he, that's a really, <laughs> really good spot. So, Ian Johnston and Andre Burton or Dan Jones, Portland yeah. Bill, Avec, the wheel swap, the roll, yeah. the wheel swap, boom. Off mm. I go. mean, it's one of those. Oh, I just feel like we should be going there maybe this summer, hundred percent. Yeah. Is there still yeah. a place to like? I can't remember. I felt like last time we stayed in um, Dre's van. Like, was there still like a random place to like sleep there? Yeah, yeah, there's a few random park places park from there. It was just yeah. like right by. Yeah. yeah, I remember the the lighthouse, and I think we set up mm. a. Believe it or not, it was a ramp going uh, a, a a jump up right. to Dre's van. I think there's a picture of that for me. Yeah, music, yeah, I remember there? that picture actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that is that. there. Yeah. I'm thinking of the right yeah. place. Oh, yeah, That's yeah, why that I was, I'm thinking there. of Portland yeah. Bill. Yeah, you're you're, to... you're you're there. Okay, there. it's all right. I feel better because yeah. I felt like I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Portland Bill's sick. Like, do I actually know what I'm it talking is. about here? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, shout out to um, to Portland Bill's uh, session in there. We we will be going. Shin is it Portland? Yeah, yeah. Next few few weeks are. Yeah. The other big question, and this comes with a mm. couple of questions actually, because of course it's mm. the Shindig podcast. Yeah. You've yeah. got your story ready, Rich. What was yeah, your I... worst ever Shindig? Uh, it was actually, well, I have two, if that's okay. Two is better than one. One on each shin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was actually. <laughs> so, right, the general consensus, it right? It is your, generally your front foot you get a Shindig with, right? Mm. Just um, everyone check your shins. Is it your front foot that's got a shin so, on it? So yeah, when I started, I'll, I'll I'll give you my mine first. Yes, my most damage is my right, but then in in the last couple of years, I've been going 
Yeah, to the left. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's Rich, yeah. you, and yours, Rich? <laughs> I, it, it both. It's quite 50-50. Okay, yeah. so the first worst one was years ago in a competition when I was, was, it, when I was a wee nipper. And I was just riding through what essentially was just a bog, like... It was just basically a giant puddle or muddy. Sounds disgusting. Classic EBT section. (laughs) Broken bits of wood in there. It was like someone just got a hammer to a pallet, smashed it up in a really big muddy puddle, and there was like, there's your route. Like, you know. (laughs) So I was pedaling through, next thing I knew, just feet were up, like I was probably wearing like football trainers and like icicles for pedals, and just feet came off. Pedal, like typical pedals swung round, whack. And I was just, I just remember that. I just didn't move. I stood in the mud <laughs> with my head down, like, ah, oh, like I was, I was young, man. It just hit. And then I, I remember the obs. I re- remember to this day the observer going, "Oh no, he's hit his knee." And I was like, I do it. "Like, you know, <laughs> yeah." Did, but didn't st- didn't come into the muddy puddle to get me out, though, did they? <laughs> They're just, just oh, poor boys, damaged. <laughs> so then the next one was probably my, it was actually my last ride at Portland, which I went to with Braggy, Ryan, and I think a friend of theirs, Aaron, I believe, or Andy, I may have got their name. His there name is, wrong, on but, the, um, I think it's Aaron. Yeah, mm, there's a guy so in their group. So we got his name right. Went to ride with hey, them yeah. and <laughs> <laughs> I was doing this up to, up to front, based on a, off, off a little rock, which is probably like no bigger than that and up to a rock which i want to say was massive but you know to me it was big but to others it'll be tiny, it was bigger than the bike <laughs> it was big it was higher than the bike yes <laughs> so i was going i was going up to up to front and next minute i knew the front wheel got on the point and ne- the bike went underneath the rock and then i basically got caught between the bike and rolled down a couple of rocks Ooh. and um but the shin dig was more from the rocks rather than the pedals. Yeah. I just Ooh. smashed up my shins on the rock and I actually got a real nice pedal gash on the back of my knee rather than the front. So the bike ended up behind Sorry, me. Sorry, it doesn't like, count. Was... Delete the story. So it doesn't count. <laughs> so yeah, end. Yeah, no, no, it's, <laughs> it does happen actually because yeah. I think um, on the week uh, at, at Bike Trial Academy, um, uh, Ali C was riding and he didn't realise it, but he was, got a, oh, yeah. a calf dig or something behind his leg yeah, and he, he knee, had no yeah. idea until i went over oh, and filmed no. it i was like oh ali doesn't count mate but it's so close <laughs> and he was like what's that and then he looks at it and goes oh now it's starting to hurt oh, <laughs> you know when you just no, look yeah. at something and then you realize yeah. well, um, when you see it it hurts all yeah so <laughs> re- related to that then what is your pedal and shoe combination what are you trusting in good faith yeah. to keep you away from the shindig now I'm using the grip shoes and the jitsi pedals. Oh, it's you're using it? So you're not using... Because you had the lightweight versions of my shoe. I did, yeah, yeah. yeah and now, the, and uh, you've changed shoes. Matt feels betrayed now. I feel fucking betrayed. So cause... sorry, dude. But there was actually... The, they were, the ones I was riding, uh, the women's version. I know. We had to tell Callum that because he bought the same ones. Yeah, and he didn't yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah. I, see, I, know, I saw them and I was like... I'm glad I switched shoe now. <laughs> but, um, well, what's funny is because I was like, why don't you dye them? Like the yellow's a bit strange. If you put, um, just yeah. dye them with a, one of the other Amazon dyes that you can buy, whatever. Um, just <laughs> um, just, just to make in. them look a little bit different. But <laughs> yes, yeah, sadly, they don't make the mine and Andre Burton and Irik Yultang. The only three people mm. in the world that still wear that shoe. Yeah. But your version was like a lighter version. I thought, oh, I'll get, I'll get that, you mm. know, seeing... Um, but everyone's buying these these grip. Yeah, shoes. well, I ended up just like the bottom of those just got a bit mashed up, and I was like, "Well, I'm kind of standing on the pedal with bare foot rather than like the shoe now, so maybe it's time to change shoe." Yeah, <laughs> when you start riding with what you feels like a glorified sock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just kind yeah, of like it's... Hmm, my foot's yeah. wrapping around the pedal, but <laughs> yeah. so grip yeah. shoes and a nice jitsy cage pedal, yeah. Mm, which I need to change actually because they're they're wearing off. So I need to get a new set. Is it like when you say that the cage itself, the grip is wearing, or do you mean like the bearings are wearing? Uh, the cage itself, as cage in like itself. they're not oh. they're not little spikes anymore. It's just they're yeah, like rounded, like it's just yeah. flat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. That's, that's just, yeah. Because I I have a set of pedals that's on one of my bikes that is eleven years old. I haven't changed them. They're fine. They work brilliantly. Nice, mm. um, nice. But that's why I'm wanting things like. 
you've just said, oh yeah, they're worn. Now I need to get new pedals. I'm thinking some people used to go over them with a Dremel, didn't they? Like when they wear down, they just get the Dremel blade out and just yeah, file them back into a nice point again. Mm. It's just interesting. But just you're a caged far, man, yeah. and so are you, right? And mm. I always found that caged gave the best. The best, worst, same thing, shindigs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I think that's why I only really realised I had those cases. That's why I won't go with them, because I'm going to get a shindig. Well, the likelihood mm. of getting a shindig is less, I find, and I really want a piece of wood to touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fine, <I can>. yeah. <laughs> quickly, quick, quick. But it yeah. is is generally less, but when it does happen, it you it's, definitely know about yeah. it. Yeah. It's just like a bear claw going, <laughs> boof, that's all that. Yeah. yeah. Don't do that again. Yeah. Yeah, or what, the, the, the bear trap, bear traps. That's yeah, or well, bear trap. Yeah, well, that's they, it. Well, you actually just got some new pedals this morning, Tom, didn't the you? The lovely shiny Onza ones, yeah. There's one. Um, nice. Spoken yeah. about in the uh, in the other Onza podcast there, which you you can also go and listen to. Yeah, for the <laughs> f- fifteen pounds on uh, eBay. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, really. On where, sorry, uh, on eBay. The, the on- Onza made these pedals called a taco pedal. We had Joe Poiser on. He's basically saying they spent so much money and time like researching into this ideal kind of cage pedal. So the actual yeah. outer part of the cage bends in a bit, so you get more grip on the pedal there. Mm-hmm. They've got adjustable yeah. pins actually in the body. So like it was just ultimate, but they it released them. Nice. They were like sixty pounds, I think, at the time. I think a lot of people probably looked at them and thought, "Ooh, they are really mm. grippy, but mm. shindig." But, <laughs> but, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I am. I've just grabbed them now, and I'm sort of like fearful to put them on the bike. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, just hands shaking, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm even fearful of picking has, them up. No, because yeah. it's got the mixture. It's the only pedal I know it has the mixture. You've got the cage sharp bits around the edge, and in the middle, mm. you've got the Two pins of a platform. Pins. Yeah. So if it goes onto your shin, you're just going to have one hell of a picture, aren't you? I feel yeah. like we should endorse them. Phone them up and be like, can we just call <laughs> them the shindig pedal? Like, it's the most yeah. gnarliest pedal you can get. Yeah, that's it. It well, is. It's got to be the most grippiest pedal I, you I, can I, get. I, Probably. Yeah, and I only know now Andrew Chai is running them now. He recently I want a commission if Chai. more and large sell more of those. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. grippiest pedal. Yeah, Suddenly, Andrew Chai's running them. Yeah, they're, they're all selling them at a loss. So maybe we'll just all buy the, the stock, rebrand them. And yeah. um, we'll call them shindiggers. Yeah, that's players. it. We've all clearly shown it. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, I don't really know if pedals are something we'd really want to go into anyway. And <laughs> clearly, yeah. Honda have shown yeah. that that is not the com- the component to make. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if they've just like, yeah, it's still hundreds and, and thousands of them. Yeah. But, um, oh, mate, we won't keep keep you too much longer. I think we've covered some real nice um, areas. There's a couple more um, important things that we definitely want to ask. There was a few names that came up throughout the course of our conversation, but who would you mm. most want to see or who should be on the Shindig podcast? Oh, that's a really good question. Name drop them. I I think, I, I think because he's been riding a long time, Dan, Dan Jones, because he's like a secret, wicked rider. Interesting. Like, I don't have it. Okay, good. that's a new name to add to the list. Yeah, Dan Jones. He is um, just really good. I don't know. He's he's very powerful, very technical, uh, a great street rider, good natural rider. Uh, like, yeah. and if they can have good conversations, that's all that matters too. Well, that's it. Doesn't it really matter how good a rider they are. I'll be honest. No, no. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yes. do they turn oh, up with like, like consistent <laughs> yeah. banter? <laughs> you know what? It's really, really tough. It's really, really tough. Well, but, um, we'll put we'll put Dan Jones down because it's nice to have a different name rather than you know a lot of people saying the same names. Go into go into maybe some slightly older like older school riders mm. if they were up for um, some like Caesar Canas. Mm. Okay, that I'm not. I'm like, he, he's he's he's, he's, he's Spanish, oh, but oh, may, I, I don't know what his English is like. But um, I was say. that's the sort of the only stumbling block with some of these awesome legendary riders. Out but there. yeah, Caesar Canas. He he was like one of my first major when I actually really like got into the chart like the culture of it all a bit more and learned who was who um he was definitely one of the guys i really like idolized and looked up to but the main guy and that's another name drop hopefully the uh, is benito ross Ooh. yes that's the second person who has voted he's, for him i hope he yeah yeah he is he well he still is like one of my biggest idols in in trials he's like Nearly forty and still like yeah. kicking That's what ass. I was say. He's still rocking. You know, out going of for all days. of us, who doesn't want to be like that? Yeah, when he's still riding like so well, and it's like I think he he keeps saying his key is yoga. Like he just does yoga every day. Ah. Like he stays supple and obviously you know 
Well, his tucks thought... were always insane, but like you'd always see a photo yeah. of him like going up to rear. He's just like, like, rear yeah. wheel would be down here somewhere. Yeah. He'd be hyperextended. Yeah. And you'd be like, yeah, yeah. Made that. yeah, his ass would be lower than his actual yeah. chain stays somehow. That's like it, yeah. his back wheel is actually by his abdominal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's so true. And, and you then think... you watch the video and he's made he's it. He's made it. You're like, how? Like he's I would love to get that man on. Yeah, what yeah. Dude. I'm, I'm, sure I'm glad there's a, a, a couple on there. And I know... Martin Hawes. Oh, yeah. yes. Martin Hawes is coming to... Oh, which leads me on to the next question. Oh, big question. Are you going to Radfest? You know what? I don't, I'm not sure if I can make it. Oh, no. Ooh, I know. Yeah, I'm not sure if I can I make hope it. Right, cool, Tom. Reschedule Radfest. <laughs> 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 well, we will certainly try to give you some sort of presence. We hope maybe we might be able to see you there anyway. Mm. Um, have you ever been to any of the Radfests before? Yeah, you I have? went to, I went to, was it last year? Maybe last year. Me and Ian, me and Ian, Jay. Uh, um, yeah, 20, it would have been 2019, like, it like, wouldn't it? Yeah, like, whenever the last one was, I was there. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, yeah, it was, and it was the first time I'd ever been. So, and I, over these past few years of, getting like really back really back into riding like i've just you know didn't know these places existed and stuff like that it was you know but really been really awesome to be able to you know go to these places like child academy Radfest, and you know all these all these rides like with you guys where you guys go and like ride out ride with you guys it's, yeah, yeah man that's really, been really good awesome. we've been lucky enough to that's ride what we want to bring back times. to it and anyone else you know as well just all get on it get on the face but let everyone know where you're riding at the weekends um just mm. keep this trial scene alive yeah, yeah just keep yeah keep putting it out there and make sure yeah. you guys actually go and check out the uh have no limits website um do you want to tell us what the the url is for that one so i don't get it wrong it is it's uh just www.havenolimits.uk Perfect. So it's have no limits uk. You can go on there. I think you just had some new t-shirts arrive as well. Yeah, yeah. Had so, a, released a, a new design. Cool so, guys, um, go and have a yeah. little ch look and check them out. They're also on Instagram at have no limits uk. Um, we, I think Rich is going to change his Instagram handle, so we don't know what it is right now. <laughs> He's changing <laughs> yeah. his name because of us. <laughs> it's going to be yeah, Rick Smith. Just keep Rick an Smith. Eye out. Uh, Rick Smith. <laughs> with, which with is, a C. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, I like it, man. I said, to, yeah. I said to you, doesn't that sound like a super? It's combined Rick and Rocket, so it's Rick it. <laughs> yeah, Rick it. <laughs> I love that. I do love. You know that. what? At the next competition, if I'm able to get podium, right? <laughs> if only if I'm going to ask them. To generally ask them to just announce Rick Smith. Yeah. And, and just see what happens. I will do it. It's got to be done. I know I, I know that you said it that but way I'll and I was being a... I'm sorry. I hope you didn't take offence to it when I was like, mate, can we just call you Rick? It sounds cooler. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> no, 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 I mean... No, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not easily offended. The name Richard right. on it... The, I will talk about this off, uh, off air, actually. I don't know why I'm going into that. Um, so, mate, well, hopefully we may see you at Radfest. That would be really nice. Yeah, um, that'd be sweet. Uh, Thank you for coming along for today and, and yeah, join us on, on yeah, our podcast, man. Great conversation. As, as, it's as been always, amazing. Mate. And thank you. I really appreciate you having me on. It's, yeah, it's, kind of, it's kind of a little bit surreal to watch all the podcasts you guys have done and, and uh, then all of a sudden be on one. So <laughs> well, you can go home and tell your mum I was on the same podcast that's as Martin it. Ashton. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, yeah. I think that's what most people have been saying. So, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, that podcast yeah. Martin Ashton was on, yeah. I think we forget yeah. that it's even a, a podcast because really all of our diehard fans just know who we are. Yeah, <laughs> most of the time, anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah. Thank you for everyone. That's kind of a big thank you for everyone who's out there listening. Yeah, and that's well. what I'm about to say. Everyone who's listening, thank you so much. Especially if you've made it this far into the podcast right now. We didn't now. think it would come this yeah. far. Um, like thirty we, odd episodes. We're like, yeah, we've just thirty hours of stuff, and I. It feels like my life in a good way. Um, <laughs> you know, I feel like I'm thinking about it constantly all the time. I'm constantly mm. having conversations with people that now I don't know that well. Um, and uh, you know, people receive messages from me thinking, Who is this weirdo that wants me on their show? Like, oh. so yeah. thank you, everyone who supported us. On that note, if you can't get enough of us, we do put out uh, obviously our podcast every week on your favorite podcast platform of choice. Please do leave us a review if you do go through yeah. Apple or anything like that because that always does 
help with help. algorithms and things. Algorithms. Algorithms, yeah. Uh, and make sure you go head over to our website as well. Check out the, the Have No Limits website. And of course, yeah, go and head over to shindigmedia.com. We yeah. actually now uh, post to all of Europe. So those people that were in Norway and the <laughs> Netherlands, they were like, oh, please, we want some T-shirts. You can <laughs> now get it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so, yeah, branching out and slowly getting in there. You can also buy Have No Limits T-shirts. So go and do that. They're yeah. much better quality than ours, I'll say, probably, you know. I well, we're are. just supporting everyone within trials. Yeah, that's you know, they think that, that's this is. Well, we're doing a T-shirt shop. So, and hopefully, absolutely, yeah. Hopefully, if that's right, we're yeah. going to do. <laughs> we're yeah. going to do a nice trade. I'm. Um, I haven't forgotten about it, Rick. We, we will me, get. Me neither. Yeah, I was just reminding myself. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, um, yeah, we'll get around to that. So, um, one other thing, I think we nearly got through the whole entire episode about mentioning Steve Rogers. So, <laughs> I just wanted to mention that. So, that's a nice way to close off the episode. You know, what? I do remember the first time I met him. But we'll, we'll leave that. <laughs> no, right. no, we can't leave on that. No, right. Just for the last minute, for the diehard fans that actually do like listening to it, tell us the story of how we met Steve Rogers then. Um, well, but, Maya's so laughing in the background. He, he arrived, well, not he arrived not at the same time as everyone else, but, you know, not that like everyone arrives at the same time. And uh, I remember a few guys talking about, oh, Captain Crash is coming, so he'll be here in a minute. And I'm like, who? gets called captain crash like and, and and then and then all of a sudden then next thing i hear from like a couple of other like whispers so, you know not like oh, yeah you know no, or probably and me it, in the back it, and of then the... i was like then who's like what how who's captain america i'm like <laughs> i'm like what's going on yeah because that's captain how it crashed from, yeah. captain america i like then steve's on his way i'm like this is mental am i about to meet chris evans like you know <laughs> and, I'm like, and then and then you know, come here comes the, uh, you know, right, rise down, Steve. I'm like, he's like, hey, you know, like Captain Crash. And, you know, yeah, Captain he's here. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm like, oh, like, right, okay, now I get it. You know, and I just, yeah, and I remember, I think Andre was there, and you know, oh, this is Rich and Rich Steve. I'm like, hey, man. But it was just like putting two and two weird together. Process for me going like from one like couple of riders like Captain Crash then I'd move over here and hear Captain America and I was like who is this guy you know it's like yeah there we go that's given some context for those listeners who have no idea why he was called that you can go and listen to his podcast with us which was the second ever one we did we'll definitely have to do another yeah. one yeah. Um, his name's Steve Rogers which is Captain America's name and he crashes yeah. so he's called <laughs> Captain <laughs> Crash <laughs> thank you all for tuning in guys and we'll see you again next week yes Bye-bye. thank you so much Thanks, Rich. Take care, mate. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Ciao for now.